Today we're going to talk about hunger. And when I say hunger, I mean the type of hunger that turns off the alarms to your body to tell you you're hungry. The hunger that goes beyond the actual pain in your stomach and the filling of your mouth with wetness to moisten food to the tiredness that you feel when you can't eat a meal. I'm talking about that kind of hunger. When I was a child, we had many things and different points in our lives, but there was a point in our life that hunger was just part of living. Um, unfortunate circumstance happened that um, was out of our control and my mother tried very hard to provide us a meal every day. And most times we had something. Now that something wasn't a full meal. Sometimes that something was biscuits with syrup and sometimes that something was a very thin broth. But there are very few days that I had absolutely nothing. I was a very lucky child in that way because I knew children that had nothing at all. And I knew of children that many days they did not eat. So I was that child that went to school to learn and secondly, to make sure that I ate breakfast and lunch. And if a teacher was paying attention, I might get an apple or or an orange or an extra milk at lunch. That was me. Did I know at the time that other people ate meals every day? I didn't because also we didn't have television. So I didn't grow up thinking, oh my goodness, we're so poor and look at all of these people in abundance. That, that wasn't my life. I'm thankful that I didn't have that added burden to being hungry. Often, when I talk about the hunger of my young uh, life, people look at me and they can say, oh my goodness, that must have been so horrible. It, it, it was not it wasn't. It was just one of the things that happened. I have one of my favorite stories and one of the best parts of my life from when I was a young child. Um, my mother was working as hard as she could. She was working nights and she was working days to make sure that we had the things we needed, like electricity and running water and often food. And uh, during one of those times, my sister, who's five years older than me, was responsible for what we need. I need to be clear when I say I was a young child. I was somewhere between eight and, and 10, uh, closer to 10, I do believe. So I came home from school and I was hungry. I was in the beginning stages of hunger where your stomach starts to rumble, but it, it doesn't hurt yet. And I said to my sister, I'm so hungry. And she looked at me like only big sisters can look at someone. And she said, did you eat your lunch? And I said, yes. And she said, did you drink all of your milk? And I said, yes. And she said, when you got home, did you drink a big glass of water? And I said, no. She said, go drink your water. You know that's part of what we need to do. And so I went and I got this humongous, humongous glass of water and I drank it. And she was right. I wasn't hungry for about an hour. And then I came back and I said, I'm so hungry. And she said, okay, I'll make us something to eat. Now at that time, our apartment had um, a gas stove and gas we learned wasn't really that important in our apartment because the heat was electric and the um and we had an electric hot plate one of those little hot plates so she turned on the hot plate and she got out a pot and she filled it with water do you see how even though we were hungry we had luxuries that many hungry people don't have 
we had water and we had electricity. So this was a hunger, but it was a hunger of, of children who had most of their basic needs met. I don't know of the hunger that happens when you don't have access to water and you don't have access to electricity. I haven't experienced that, um, so I can't speak about that. But she turned on the water and she filled the pot and then off the shelf she got salt. Well, she tried to and like she tried to shake it and there was no salt. But one thing we did learn is when we did have food and in the occasions that we were able to go out, we were the children that collected every salt packet, every pepper packet, every ketchup packet, every mustard packet. And, and yeah, so that's what we did. And so she went to the drawer and she got a few salt packets and she sh shook them in there and then pepper. And then she opened the refrigerator and because it was near the end of the week, there was nothing there. There was nothing there to eat. And so, um, she looked at me and she said, I'm going to make you salt and pepper soup. And I was, I was so floored. I said, salt and pepper soup. And, and she said, yeah, it's the best soup that you can have. And so I said, okay. So then she got out the ketchup packets and she was squeezing ketchup into this water that was bubbling and smelling really good of salt and pepper. And she mixed it together and she got a, a cup and she poured this broth into my cup and she said, taste it. I learned how to make this a long time ago and it was so delicious and my stomach started to fill up and I wasn't hungry for days. And so I said, okay. And we, we drank our hot salt and pepper soup and it was delicious. And she was right. I wasn't hungry for a whole day. And when I tell that story, people say, oh my gosh, you had to drink salt and pepper and water with ketchup? It must have been so horrible. And I have to tell you, it wasn't. It wasn't horrible at all. It was, it was an experience that taught me something. It taught me the magic of words, thoughts become things. And it taught me the magic of resiliency and, and the, the idea that from something, from nothing, it can become something. Salt and pepper soup. It was what we had. And with it, she created a story and she created a broth that sustained us in that moment. What from your life do you have that can sustain you for the moment?